so if you are from the field of physics you might have noticed that some quantities are a vector some quantities are scalar and some quantities are product of two vectors and still they are scalar while some quantities are product of two vectors while they are vectors so have you ever wondered why is this and how is this so any person who has anything to do with physics especially uh, in classical physics might have noticed that work done is a scalar quantity that is it does not represent any direction of work done and work done in and itself is the product of two vectors that is force and displacement now the question you should be asking is how can you get a scalar quantity out of the product of two vectors now let us say that we have two vectors a and b working at an angle of theta between them so let us say that the coefficients of vector a along x y and z directions be ax ay and az respectively and the same can also be said for the vector b this can also be written in the form of an equation now to multiply these two vectors and get a scalar quantity is a pretty simple operation and which can be done very easily by multiplying the components along x direction of both of these vectors and then multiplying the components of both of these vectors along y direction and again multiplying the components of both of these vectors along z direction and then adding all of them and there we go we have a scalar quantity which happens to be the product of these two vectors this operation can also be done in a different way and in this way what we will do we will try to project a vector onto the other vector and then uh, we can multiply the projection of the first vector with the magnitude of the second vector and we will again get the same scalar quantity as we found in the first method now we will try to understand its application with an example so as an example let's assume that two balls are thrown in opposite direction from the top of a building with different velocities say 4 meters per second and 3 meters per second now what you have to find is the distance between these two balls when their velocity vectors are perpendicular to each other so you can pause the video and give it a thought but if you don't want to then please continue so to solve this problem what we will do we will first ignore the air friction so the velocity of both of these balls along horizontal direction will remain constant since there is no force working against their movement in horizontal direction but in vertical direction we have the force of gravity working on both of them applying the same acceleration on both of them so what will happen here is that their velocity along vertical direction will increase but the velocity of both of these balls along horizontal direction will remain unchanged since the acceleration due to gravity is the same on both of these balls so every time we calculate the velocity of both of these balls we will get the same value for each ball so we can assume the horizontal direction to be the x-axis and the vertical direction to be the y-axis so we have a case of two-dimensional plane so let us assume that the velocity along vertical direction of both of these balls at the time when the velocity vectors of these balls are perpendicular to each other be v by so the velocity vectors for both of these balls at the time when they are perpendicular to each other can be written as follows one of the velocities along horizontal direction should be taken as negative since the velocity of one of the object is opposite to the other in horizontal direction whereas in vertical direction both of them are going downwards 
so if taking both of them as negative or positive does not going to have any effect so with this information we can get uh, the dot product using the first method as mentioned to find the dot product but we have an unknown quantity here so to find the value of this unknown quantity we can also use the second method of finding the dot product now we know that we are talking about a point where the velocity vectors of both of these balls will be perpendicular to each other so the projection of any of them onto the other will be zero so if we multiply any quantity with zero we will get zero so we have another information here that the dot product of any two vectors which are perpendicular to each other is always zero as mentioned earlier using both of these methods to find the dot product of between two vectors we will get the same value so uh, we can equate the equation that we got using the first method with zero we can solve the equation we have just found for the value of vy now you have to keep in mind that what information we have now we have the initial velocity which is zero in vertical direction and the final velocity we are talking about the point where the velocity vectors of both of these balls will be perpendicular which happen to be two times square root of three just for some numerical values and the value of rate of change of velocity which is the acceleration due to gravity so what we don't have here is the time it took to reach that velocity from zero so we know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity so from here we can calculate the time it took to reach a velocity of 2 times root under 3 from 0 so after knowing the value of time we can calculate the uh, value of distance both of these balls moved from the building in that time which will be the velocity in horizontal direction times the time both of these balls took to reach a vertical velocity of 2 times the square root of 3 and then adding both of these since both of the balls are moving in opposite direction so this is what we are looking for and this problem becomes really easy just to know a new concept of physics thanks for watching and don't forget to like share and subscribe